How does venom work? Snake venom is that the poisonous, typically yellow fluid stored within the modified salivary glands of venomous snakes. There are many venomous snake species that believe the venom they produce to debilitate and immobilize their prey. Venom consists of a mixture of proteins, enzymes, and other molecular substances. These toxic substances work to destroy cells, disrupt nerve impulses, or both. Snakes use their venom cautiously, injecting amounts sufficient to disable prey or to defend against predators. Venom works by breaking down cells and tissues, which may cause paralysis, internal bleeding, and death for the snake bite victim. For venom to require effect, it must be injected into tissues or enter the bloodstream. While venom is poisonous and deadly, researchers also use venom components to develop drugs to treat human diseases. What's in snake venom? Snake venom is that the fluid secretions from the modified salivary glands of venomous snakes. Snakes believe venom to disable prey and aid within the digestive process. The primary component of venom is protein. These toxic proteins are the explanation for most of the harmful effects of venom. It also contains enzymes, which help to hurry up chemical reactions that break chemical bonds between large molecules. These enzymes aid within the breakdown of carbohydrates, proteins, phospholipids, and nucleotides in prey. Toxic enzymes also function to lower vital sign, destroy red blood cells, and inhibit muscle control. An additional component of venom is polypeptide toxin. Polypeptides are chains of amino acids, consisting of 50 or fewer amino acids. Polypeptide toxins disrupt cell functions resulting in necrobiosis. Some toxic components of venom are found altogether poisonous snake species, while other components are found only in specific species. Three main sorts of snake venom, cytotoxins, neurotoxins, and hemotoxins. Although snake venoms are composed of a posh collection of poisons, enzymes, and non-toxic substances, they need historically been classified into three main types. Cytotoxins, neurotoxins, and hemotoxins. Other sorts of snake toxins affect specific sorts of cells and include cardiotoxin, myotoxins, and nephrotoxins. Three main sorts of snake venom, cytotoxins, neurotoxins, and hemotoxins. Although snake venoms are composed of a posh collection of poisons, enzymes, and non-toxic substances, they need historically been classified into three main types. Cytotoxins, neurotoxins, and hemotoxins. Other sorts of snake toxins affect specific sorts of cells and include cardiotoxin, myotoxins, and nephrotoxins. Cytotoxins are poisonous substances that destroy body cells. Cytotoxins cause the death of most or all of the cells during a tissue or organ, a condition referred to as necrosis. Some tissue may experience liquefactive necrosis during which the tissue is partially or completely liquefied. Cytotoxins help to partially digest the prey before it's even eaten. Cytotoxins are usually specific to the sort of cell they impact. Cardiotoxins are cytotoxins that damage heart cells. Myotoxins target and dissolve muscle cells. Nephrotoxins destroy kidney cells. Many venomous snake species have a mixture of cytotoxins and a few can also produce neurotoxins or hemotoxins. Cytotoxins destroy cells by damaging the cell wall and inducing cell lysis. They'll also cause cells to undergo programmed necrobiosis or apoptosis. Most of the observable tissue damage caused by cytotoxins occurs at the location of the bite. Neurotoxins are chemical substances that are poisonous to the system and nervosum. Neurotoxins work by disrupting chemical signals, neurotransmitters sent between neurons. They'll reduce neurotransmitter production or block neurotransmitter reception sites. Other snake neurotoxins work by blocking voltage-gated calcium channels and voltage-gated potassium channels. 
These channels are important for the transduction of signals along neurons. Neurotoxins cause muscle paralysis which can also end in respiratory difficulty and death. Snakes of the Elapidae typically produce neurotoxic venom. These snakes have small, erect fangs and include cobras, mambras, sea snakes, death adders, and coral snakes. Examples of snake neurotoxins include 1. Calcisiptine this neurotoxin disrupts impulse transduction by blocking voltage-gated calcium channels. Black mambas use this sort of venom. 2. Cobrotoxin, produced by cobras, blocks nicotinic acetylcholine receptors leading to paralysis. 3. Calciclidine, like calciceptin, this neurotoxin blocks voltage-gated calcium channels disrupting nerve signals. It's found within the eastern black mamba. 4. Fasciculini, also found within the eastern black mamba, inhibits acetylcholinesterase function leading to uncontrollable muscle movement, convulsions, and breathing paralysis. 5. Coliotoxin, produced by blue coral snakes, targets sodium channels and prevents them from closing, leading to paralysis of the whole body. Hemotoxins are blood poisons that have cytotoxic effects and also disrupt normal blood clotting processes. These substances work by causing red blood cells to burst open, by interfering with blood coagulation factors, and by causing tissue death and organ damage. Destruction of red blood cells and therefore the inability of blood to clot cause serious internal bleeding. The buildup of dead red blood cells also can disrupt proper kidney function. While some hemotoxins inhibit blood coagulation, others cause platelets and other blood cells to clump together. The resulting clots block blood circulation through blood vessels and may cause coronary failure. Snakes of the viperidae, including vipers and pit vipers, produce hemotoxins. Most venomous snakes inject venom into their prey with their fangs. Fangs are highly effective at delivering venom as they pierce tissue and permit venom to flow into the wound. Some snakes also are ready to spit or reject venom as a defense reaction. Venom injection systems contain four main components, venom glands, muscles, ducts, and fangs. 1. Venom glands. These specialized glands are found within the head and function production and storage sites for venom. 2. Muscles. Muscles within the head of the snake near venom glands help to squeeze venom from the glands. 3. Ducts. Ducts provide a pathway for the transport of venom from the glands to the fangs. 4. Fangs. These structures are modified teeth with canals that leave venom injection. Snakes of the viperidae have an injection system that's very developed. Venom is continuously produced and stored in venom glands. Before vipers bite their prey. They erect their front fangs. After the bite, muscles round the glands force a number of the venom through the ducts and into the closed fang canals. The quantity of venom injected is regulated by the snake and depends on the dimensions of the prey. Typically, vipers release their prey after the venom has been injected. The snake waits for the venom to recur effect and immobilize the prey before it consumes the animal. Snakes of the Elapidae, example cobras, mambras, and adders, have an identical venom delivery and injection system as vipers. Unlike vipers, elipides don't have movable front fangs. The Acanthophus antarcticus is that the exception to the present among elipides. Most elipides have short, small fangs that are fixed and remain erect. After biting their prey, Elipides typically maintain their grip and chew to make sure optimal penetration of the venom. Venomous snakes of the Colubridae have one open canal on each fang which is a passageway for venom. Venomous Colubrides typically have fixed rear fangs and chew their prey while injecting venom. Colubride venom tends to possess less harmful impacts on humans than the venom of elipides or vipers. However, Venom from the booms lang and twig snake has resulted in human deaths. Can snake venom harm snakes? Since some snakes use venom to kill their prey, why isn't the snake harmed when it eats the poisoned animal? Venomous snakes are not harmed by the poison used to kill their prey because the primary component of snake venom is protein. 
Protein-based toxins must be injected or absorbed into body tissues or the bloodstream to be effective. Ingesting or swallowing snake venom is not harmful because the protein-based toxins are broken down by stomach acids and digestive enzymes into their basic components. This neutralizes the protein toxins and disassembles them into amino acids. However, if the toxins were to enter blood circulation, the results could be deadly. Venomous snakes have many safeguards to help them to remain immune to or less susceptible to their own venom. Snake venom glands are positioned and structured in a way that prevents the venom from flowing back into the snake's body. Poisonous snakes also have antibodies or antivenoms to their own toxins to protect against exposure. For instance, if they were bitten by another snake of the same species. Researchers have also discovered that cobras have modified acetylcholine receptors on their muscles, which prevent their own neurotoxins from binding to these receptors. Without these modified receptors, the snake neurotoxin would be able to bind to the receptors resulting paralysis and death. The modified acetylcholine receptors are the key to why cobras are immune to cobra venom. While poisonous snakes may not be vulnerable to their own venom, they are vulnerable to the venom of other poisonous snakes. In addition to the development of antivenom, the study of snake venoms and their biological actions has become increasingly important for the discovery of new ways to fight human diseases. Some of these diseases include stroke, Alzheimer's disease, cancer, and heart disorders. Since snake toxins target specific cells, researchers are investigating the methods by which these toxins work to develop drugs that are able to target specific cells. Analyzing snake venom components has aided in the development of more powerful painkillers as well as more effective blood thinners. Researchers have used the anti-clotting properties of hemotoxins to develop drugs for the treatment of high blood pressure, blood disorders, and heart attack. Neurotoxins have been used in the development of drugs for the treatment of brain diseases and stroke. The first venom-based drug to be developed and approved by the FDA was Captopril, derived from the Brazilian Viper and used for the treatment of high blood pressure. Other drugs derived from venom include Eptophibatide, Rattlesnake and Terafoban, African Sawscaled Viper for the treatment of heart attack and chest pain.